And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia, hi. I'm Mike Delicio. And I'm Roy Kennedy. All right, well today is going to be slightly different than normal. We're talking about Pandemic Legacy Season Zero. Uh, if you want to know how the game plays itself, I did an overview a couple weeks ago, so you can go look for that. We'll put a link in the description of this so you can see how the game works. We're going to do our best to keep this particular thing. This is just our thoughts on the game. Uh, we're going to try to do our best to keep this as spoiler-free as we can, but realize that small things are going to get out there. If you don't want to know anything about the game, then, well, you should be watching a review, frankly. Um, yes. The, but we're not going to spoil what happens in the game and so on. Um, I will say that when it showed up, I was surprised. I knew they were doing a third Pandemic Legacy, but I thought it was going to be Season 3. Uh, did you know that this was going to be Season 0, Z? No, I did not. No, it was a surprise to me, too. Um, a nice surprise and a, a nice twist, you know. Uh, the um, season two was already would have been tricky to follow up chronologically. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see the the third act twist, so to speak, that they pulled off here. To that end, people have asked about spoilers, and yes, uh, if you play Pandemic Season Zero uh, near the end, it you know, it's going to lead into Pandemic Season 1, so there will be some spoilers to that regard if you care about that sort of thing. However, you could play it. It, it has nothing to do with Season 2. So you could play one zero two if you wanted to, which is actually what I would I would recommend you playing them in that order, actually. Right. I think we have right. all different experience levels here as well, because uh, I know I've only played Season 1 and Season 0, um, and Mike, you said you this was the only Pandemic Legacy you'd played, right? Right. This was my first experience with a Pandemic Legacy game. I've played a lot of Pandemic and the different iterations of Pandemic, but this was the first time playing it Legacy. And I had heard, you know, I didn't really try to avoid spoilers on 1 and 2, so I had heard little bits and pieces here and there. So it was interesting when I could tell that there was something that was alluding to other games in the series through your reactions... Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't quite have that same connection, but it was still interesting to be a part of that experience of discovery. Yeah, this is a very different game in many regards. And uh, when you go into it, it's taking place in the past during the height of the Cold War. And it follows a storyline along those lines that you might expect in different twists and turns. Um, and this is one of the games that I would definitely say if you've, for everybody, I don't care how good of a pandemic player you are, you want to play the prologue in this one because it's a different game than pandemic. Sure. Yeah. I, w I would argue this is not as different from pandemic as season two is. Right. But you still want to play that prologue. And, and this game is certainly challenging. So you're going to want to sort of get ready for that. I actually thought it was this could have been packaged. The prologue could have been packaged as its own version of Pandemic, like the sure. Pandemic Iberia. I thought it was a strong enough variant by itself before the legacy stuff. I agree. Yeah, no, I agree. And um, with some of the other ones, like Pandemic Season 1, the prologue, there is no prologue, but like the beginning is just Pandemic. And then Season mm -hmm. 2, you can't do that with. But uh, I agree. I think this... The, the groundwork in, in Season Zero here is very strong. If this game was not a legacy game and you just play what, what you play originally, that's still a strong showing. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I really like now, this how one... they can... I really like how they can take that pandemic system and just, like, change it into several different ways and just give you still, like, a lot of the same core mechanics, but in this one, you're doing things completely different. I mean, it's all about agents and things like that and um you you still get that feel of they're spreading around and you're trying to stop them right yeah i don't want to you know again we're trying not to spoil stuff but some of the stuff that mm -hmm. you know from the beginning the aspects of these teams that you create and then you use these teams to go around and do various things i really like that mechanism it is incredibly fun it's thematic it feels dynamic um 
of all the stuff that we can talk about, that was possibly my favorite part of, of, of the new mechanisms to this game. Those teams and creating them. Oh, actually, it's one of two things that I, I liked mm-hmm. a lot. The, 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 the teams. Yeah, I really, the, the thing about the teams that I thought was, was really good was that it was a similar difficulty level to get a team out than it was to cure a disease, say, an original pandemic. Right. But then after you've done that, now, like you said, they're more dynamic. Whereas when you cured the disease before, maybe the only other thing you can do is eradicate it, right? Whereas here, you've got those teams. That's not your end goal. Now, you've gone through this great effort to get these teams established, and now you put them to work. And I think that that really gives you a sense of, of agency, I guess slightly pun intended, uh, in, in moving around the, the, that world map. So I really liked the team aspect. I think for me, my favorite sort of aspects, like you were saying, Tom, that you really like that idea. I think for me, it's likely two things as well, but it would be the great sense of mission structure, if you would, Mm -hmm. you know, from from session to session, the variety in in season one and season two, which, by the way, I just I finished replaying season one last week. I'm halfway through season two right now now mm. again wow, you're like on a, you're on a pandemic wow. <laughs> so these are very this is all very fresh in my head season wow. one season two and the new one um the variety of missions from game to game mm-hmm. i am about uh, i don't know may or something in season two the the missions the things to accomplish have been the same for the last three months i think mm. it's just you just do these things you know you get to pick mm-hmm. like three out of four you know but it's the same idea. Season zero here, the new one, they're very distinct from round mm-hmm. to round. And they sort of have a they have a stable of mission types they can pull out and bring back in and mess, mess around with. I think it's yeah. the variety is just spectacular and engaging, you know. And then the other thing, a, m- a smaller thing than that, is just that I like the fact that the cards in this game, many of them are multi-use cards. Right. I totally agree yep. with the whole the whole mission structure thing because when I played season one, that was one of the things that I kind of took away with it was like this is a whole lot of like just pandemic, you know, like a lot of the first games felt you're playing like core pandemic, and this sure. the fact that there's that variety with the missions, it feels very new a lot of the times that you play it. Yeah, the Z what Z mentioned is really fantastic. This game, um, we play through the whole thing through. We played through fewer games than we played through in Pandemic 1 and 2, both, at least mm-hmm. me and Z, are compared yes. to our games there. Yes. However, the games are, on average, longer games. I would say 90 minutes is a fair assessment for a game. Maybe even some of them got closer to two hours, some of them closer to 60, somewhere between an hour and two hours each. But like Z said, they all felt distinct. And mm. you can tell that Rob Davio and Matt Leacock have leaned on all the things that worked from all the different mm-hmm. legacy games that they've been working with. And they brought it into this game so that even if you lose a mission in the first half of a month, the second half can still feel different. Right. And it works both mechanically and thematically. They explain, well, this didn't work and now you got to do this. I was, I was astounded by that. And... Again, without spoiling stuff, you will be able to play through it again, and it could be a very different game based on decisions you make. What do you guys think of the passports? I feel like that was probably my favorite part overall was the whole setting up with, with characters and the passports and stuff, and not with that getting too far into it, the fact that you can have special abilities like you have in regular Pandemic. There were abilities that felt very similar to other Pandemic games, but the ability to expound on that and maybe combo some stuff together was definitely my favorite part of the game overall. Yeah, I thought the the passwords at the beginning of the of the game, when we're handing these out, I thought, okay, well, this is a, a, a clever gimmick. Uh, I quite honestly thought that it was going to turn out to be a little bit more gimmicky than it turned out to be. It was... Uh, what one of the things I think is impressive about this game is that again, avoiding spoilers, by the end of the game, your potential pool of actions and options is it would be overwhelming if you had them at the beginning of the game. But by the end of the game, 
It's absolutely not. And and those passports, without getting too much into it, play into that. They allow you to just open up your decision space, and it really gives you this, this real sense of, okay, these are the issues that we need to deal with. Between the two, three, four of us, in our case, four, how are we going to best utilize all of these options at our disposal? And so it's it's a really nice balance between feeling like you can do everything, but it's still not enough <laughs> because there's mm-hmm. so many things that you're dealing with. So I think the passports were a really great aspect of that. And it works both mechanically. It's really clever and interesting and yeah. new. And thematically, it's just mm-hmm. spot on for the setting in which we're playing. Right. It just re- really works. Uh, so I thought it was a it was a nice stroke of genius. Whenever they came up with that one, it mm-hmm. must have been they, they must have taken the rest of that day off because that's a good. Movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it also it made the character your own. So yeah, right. in Pandemic and Pandemic Legacy Season One, and here's a, we have the medic or whatever. And so I'll play the medic one game, and then maybe Z will play the medic the next game. But in this one, you have your character the whole game. Well, no, you can change that. You can technically, you can move them around. I think it was just that we, we identified, you build them up so much, you kind of, like, you get more invested than you do in the other two on, like, Johnny does this thing. But since there's only four passports, right? That's true, but you could still, like, I could have played yours and you could have played mine one game. So they allow for that, you know, and, like, like, next time I play it, I'll likely play two players. Two of the passports, the other two, the extra two, I should say, are getting built up at the same rate. So I could always swap one in and out. Mm-hmm. But ah, I see, I see, I see. You get ide- you get you, we ident- we were playing four yes. of us, so it worked out. So we like start to identify with these people, and they're yes. you know the passport built up around them mm-hmm. and all of that. So it, it really it worked out that way. But um, I agree that the mechanisms allow for it to work out that way really well. I'll tell you the truth. If somebody had suggested taking my passport, I would have been uncomfortable oh, with it. I sure. literally would have been uncomfortable <laughs> with it. I'd be like, hey, this is these, this is my character. These are, this, you know, you really do get invested. That's a great word for it. And I love so that it allows you... you to, we kind of like all knew our roles, you know. We, I mean, mm-hmm. you have certain powers. Um, I had a character that's one of the starting powers you start with. That I was good at building teams. So I was like, I'm the team guy. Like, how are we going to get these teams built? And like everybody kind of fell into their roles. And then when more things were available, we're like, how can we make these things better? Like it was interesting being able to know what everybody was good at and then try to like work off of each other. And I, I love the cooperation in those games. And I feel like, all that stuff with the passports coming together just helps build that cooperation as well. What did you all think about the story of the game? I think it's good. I liked it. I thought it was a little nebulous, but it's that's a mm. little... That's hard to not have it go that way. I right. actually thought you were talking about uh, how these guys brought to the table experience from past legacy games mainly. And I agree with that. I even was surprised to see Rob Davio bring a little seafall to this game <laughs> with that book of stories, you know, the book yeah. of passages, if you would, which I thought worked really well. You know, yes, some of them are a little vague, but it worked nicely. It's nice to be able to accomplish something and read a little passage or, yeah. or fail at something and read a little passage. So I think ultimately there is more story here. Mm. Is it concrete? Is it spectacular? It's okay. It's an okay story. It's, you know, you've seen it in every, like, TV show about spies or whatever, right? <laughs> but um, but there is more of it. Like, for example, again, I was just playing Pandemic Season 1 and 2. One of the months set up in Pandemic Season 1, when you draw the story card, literally says, just keep going or something. Like, you know what you're doing. Keep going. Like, it does nothing. They're like, right. just, just, we have nothing for you this month. That was never the case in Season 0. No. That's no. true. I thought that the... <clears throat> I really liked the Cold War theme a lot. I thought it was fun. Mm-hmm. I thought that the storybook was great and interesting things happened throughout. I thought the story was slightly predictable. Sure. Um, we tried to sometimes go against expectations. <laughs> right. um, I liked some of the ideas of it. But at the end of the day, there wasn't that massive gut feeling that I had during some specific points in season one 
Mm-hmm. But then again, I'm also on the lookout for that stuff now, so it's not as surprising, maybe. Right. Right. This game has the unfortunate place of uh, you know the the that's the third in a series right. that you've come to expect surprises from. But um, it did surprise me. Um, at at a point in this game, it introduced a new mechanism, mm-hmm. which blew my yeah, mind with how cool it was. It was it was great, and that was one of my favorite parts of the game. And I don't know that we're going to get into any detail on that. Um, the that core narrative thread, I guess I would call it, it was was fine. I mean, it, it was as you said, it was pretty predictable in a lot of ways. Um, but I did enjoy those passages. They were well written. They they seemed to have a, a narrative coherence. The the one issue I did have was I felt like it was difficult. There are times when you're asked to answer questions. I'll leave it at that. And I didn't, <clears throat> pardon me, always have a good sense at what the answer to those questions were ultimately going to lead to. And I think when you're presented as a player or players, when you're presented choices that you know are going to potentially impact further games, I would like to at least have more of a sense of where that might be heading. I, you know, so there were, I, I, I wish there was a little more clarity in those decision points, but otherwise I enjoyed the story. Speaking of story, I should mention at this point, and this is, I guess, a slight spoiler, but this game, like the other Pandemic Legacies, when you're done, you're done. There is yeah. no continuing on afterwards. I guess you could go play season one, possibly, although there's still a time differential there. But uh, you can, you'll can you play through. The game is has the prologue, and then up from 12 to 24, uh, from 12 to 23 more games uh, as you go through it. Um, so what are, is there anything else before we go to final opinions? Mm, no, right. I mean, I wrote down some stuff. I basically said that, um, uh, I was comparing it to the other two and I said it has more story, more story than the first. It's less quirky than the second. I really think the second, which I'm playing through now, I forgot how weird that game is. <laughs> yeah, it, is really it really like, is. It's like they basically decided to, okay, we gave him Pandemic, we gave him Pandemic Legacy, now let's take all that stuff and just completely turn it on its head. This game does not try to be weird for the sake of being weird. I feel like Legacy 2 did that, which is fine, but it did that. So it's less quirky than that. It is more diverse than both, I would say. The mission structure, all that stuff. I also would say it's probably more complex than both. Mm. Um, which is why, like you said, Tom, Season 1, then 0, then Two, that's a good way to do it story wise, kind of works out nicely. But one, two, zero, it might ramp you up for some of the complexities you're going to discover in this game. I just want to say All that right. this definitely had a lot of things that I really enjoy in legacy games, you know. I mean, the ability to carry things over from game to game. I mean, that's all there. And the thing, things that legacy games can do that other board games can't is the fact that they can surprise you with different things as the game goes along. And this game definitely had that in spades as well. So that was really cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. we probably also want to mention just briefly a couple of uh, design, I mean, like manufacturing issues that we encountered. Yes, um, yes. This is not a spoiler, but some of the things you scratch off, mm-hmm. it's been there forever. And um, they they were not the best. They, they, they had some ideas behind that that should have been different. The scratching right. off thing. Um, yeah, that was the weakest manufacturing thing for sure. Right. There's a couple of tiny little manufacturing things. They're, they're small. They're not going to spoil the game for you. Right. Just mm-hmm. I want to make sure it doesn't sound like we're saying the game is perfect. It's not. Right. It, there's little issues. Yes. Well, what's your final thoughts, Roy? Um, I definitely enjoyed it. Uh, I It's hard for me to get like these sprawling campaign games to the table and things like that a lot of times. You have to have the dedicated group to do it. But if you have a group that you're able to make that happen with, I feel like this is a really enjoyable legacy game. It's probably like one of my favorites. Um, it's, I don't think it's my very favorite legacy game, but I really enjoy it. Um, are we doing numbers as well? Sure. I think for me, it's going to be an 8.5. I really enjoyed it, um, and I think it's fun. I, I'm not as big on Pandemic as a whole as other people. I still do really enjoy the cooperative aspect of it, though, and I think it's a fun game. Mike? Well, this being my first foray into Pandemic Legacy games, I kind of feel like I hit the mother load. <laughs> to me, it sounds like I've played the best of the three, uh, just based mm-hmm. on what I've heard. 
Um, I, I really did enjoy it. I will say this, and, and this is kind of piggybacking on uh, Z's comment that he feels like it's the most complex of the three. Uh, I'm glad that I was not handling the administration of the b- beginning of the game and between game stuff because I feel like as a new player, that could be a little bit intimidating. Right. Uh, I was happy to be kind of along for the ride, and and I felt like I made some contributions as a player, but... Um, mm-hmm. That's something to maybe keep in mind. <laughs> he's, he's not so sure about that. Um, he helped me uh, out, that's for sure. There you go. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, is that I do feel like it, it could be a little bit intimidating if people haven't played a lot of Legacy games. That being said, I had a really amazing experience, very much. Um, I, I feel like uh, I, I don't want to copy Roy, but it really was, I was coming into this with an 8.5 rating in mind, and, and uh, so I, I really do feel like it's excellent. It's one of the best mm-hmm. Legacy games I've played. Um, and the interesting thing, though, is I don't know if I want to play season one or season two at this point. Um, I, I almost kind of want to have this pure experience, but that, <laughs> I may change my mind. I would, I would probably honestly consider now that you've played this one, I would say I would give you like the, the three minute spoiler for season one and then just mm-hmm. tell you to play season two because okay. it is so distinct. Right. Yeah, right season right. two has a very different feel for sure. OK. What about you, Z? All right. So, um. I really like it. I like it way more than mm-hmm. these guys. I'm de- I keep going back and forth in my head between a 9.5 and just a 10. Mm-hmm. It is that good. It's not perfect. I keep backing off of the 10 because the game's not perfect. But let- to be fair, I don't think my 10s necessarily mean this game is perfect. Wow. Mm-hmm. So I think I rated some of the other pandemics probably 10s when I played them. The first one had the benefit of being a surprise. Blew my sure. mind. So there's that, but this is a fantastic design. This is a 10. If you like legacy games, if you like traditional pandemic, but you want more, if you thought season two was a little too strange, I don't know. I think it's great. I think they really answered every question I could have had for a follow-up to those two really fantastic designs. So yeah, this gets a 10 from me. For me, part of this is colored by the fact of how it was played and who I played it with. Uh, okay. We got to... Oh, here you know, we, we go. Have, Six out of ten, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got to... You know, in the past, when we played Pandemic Season 1, we blew through that in two weeks. Season 2, mm-hmm. I think we stretched it out maybe slightly longer, but we blew through it pretty quite quickly. This one was a little over a month where we played through this one. And I played with these three guys, and it was... Such a fantastic time. I mean, and this was with all due respect, everyone else I played legacy games with, this was the best experience in that regard. Mm-hmm. I really felt like we had super strong teamwork mm-hmm. uh, going through. We got attached to our characters. There was not, I mean, we joked occasionally about alpha gaming, but mm-hmm. I never felt like that was really there. And it helped mm-hmm. to have expert pandemic player Z to say, hey, yes. this, this, and this. Tournament and then pro Roy player. Was, tournament, pro player. Tournament proven, yes. Tournament approved, yes. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> that being said, though, I felt like we're pretty good at the game, and it was pretty hard. It's oh, a very yes. hard one, and that you need to go in knowing that it's a difficult game. But I also felt like even though the game was hard, it knows it's hard. Mm-hmm. It knows that the game is hard, and it kind of says, okay, yeah, you're going to have a hard time going through this, and it, it keeps you going. It doesn't yeah. beat you down that that much. Um and I just it really pushed forth that idea of teamwork. So to this end, I'm with Z. I'm sitting at a 9.5 right now, wow. and I also realize I'm coming off a high here. Um, mm-hmm. And I because I said because now when I look back, I think I probably like one a little better than two, if only because of the initial experience and the excitement. Two is definitely mm-hmm. interesting and unique and weird, um, but one just had that strong wow. Three feels like the most polished legacy game I've ever played. It feels like they took everything they've learned, put it together. It's, it's, it also feels really replayable. Like with season one, I put season one down, and then I came back and played it again later on, and I was like, oh, okay, I remember some of these things, but you know, I know how this works. This season zero, I feel like we could go back and play again, and it, there's a lot of things we did not see. Correct. I mean, I saw them because I always go and look at everything. But there's a lot of things we didn't see. I haven't even read all the different 
I know there's like I think there's like eight different endings you can get to. That's kind of wow. cool. Yeah, yeah. Very and cool. And so that makes me happy that there's that kind of level of replayability in every game. Like Z said, I was I remember being disappointed in Pandemic Legacy Season One when we got to that month where they're like, oh, everything's the same. Now they did change things. Don't it doesn't stay that way. Sure. But in this one, every game it was like something new, and I was like, oh, mm-hmm. how do we deal with this now? Right. And it was it, such it, a you never feel like you're experience. getting a repeat a repeat month no. in Season Zero. There's always something you're doing, and they tie it thematically and mechanically. Yeah, it, it, it yeah. sings. So. Well, that's that. I hope you all enjoy the game when it comes out. I think that it's possible to play this game having never played the other ones. If you want to jump into it, you could. Sure. But I still think I would recommend playing Season 1 first, if possible, just because, hey, it's good to know how a legacy game works. Yeah. But, well, that's that. We hope you all enjoyed that. Um, we'll, we'll, maybe someday in the future we'll do a spoiler review, but maybe not. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway, until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Mike Delicio. Take care, everyone. And I'm Roy Candy. Have fun gaming.